All right, everybody, welcome to Top Daily Grind. We have a very special episode today. This is uh, this one's pretty cool. We got we got the main guys from CRKT that are here with us, and we're talking about a collaboration that we did. A lot of people have been asking, when are we gonna, you know, do more knife knife podcast, and and you know, and, and having the honor to have you guys on board. You know, you guys ain't no small company, and for small tops company that to, to have you guys on is you know, yeah, it's great honor, to be here. Seriously, so. Yeah, it's the um, it's fun, um, and the honors are thanks for the invitation. Um, having been down the same path you've been going down for the last how many years now, Leo? Twenty five years. Twenty five. You're almost as old as I am then, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're sneaking up on thirty years. I guess that's part of what we're yeah. talking about today, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. It's yeah, amazing it's, how fast it goes, and you're talking about heat treating some samples. Yeah, we've been the darkness of night and getting. I remember those days yeah. quite well. Yeah. But, it, you know, it, it's something, I guess, that's probably my stress reliever, you know, from the day-to-day business and, you know, dealing with the books and dealing with that. I don't like that part. But being in, a, being in my shop and, yeah. being, you know, that's that's what, you know, I like to do. Sure. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, so we, got, uh, so we got Rod and we got Doug. Yeah. So, uh, so, Rod, tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your company for, uh, for those that are listening that don't already know. Well, let's see. I'm uh, an old Montana farm boy. Grew up in a Wheaton uh, cattle ranch in central Montana. And uh, I dreamt about being a knife peddler my entire life. Okay, I can start telling the truth now. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I grew up. You know, I, I, I did have a fascination. I remember when I was a kid, um, there was an implement dealer that would send out a uh, salesman. He called my dad on a regular basis because he bought a lot of stuff. And I thought, that dude has got the best job on the planet. He's got a company truck. He comes out here. He talks to my dad. He sells new tractors. I love that guy. I'm going to be like him someday. <laughs> but Jesus, it happened. I wasn't selling uh, tractors, but I got into the sales and marketing job pretty quick. I was When I was a kid, I got hurt with uh, back injury and kind of messed me up with some of the other things I wanted to do, do with my life physically. So I didn't end up back on the farm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I went into the corporate world pretty early. Worked for a company out of Kansas City, Missouri, Hallmark Cards for a dozen years, and uh, had a pretty good run there. And moved around a few times. Decided I was gonna, I was done moving my family. Um, I'd just been in Portland, Oregon for like six months, and they said, "Remember, we want you to move to Denver." Said, Gee, I just got here. <laughs> this ain't right. My kids don't even know how to get home from school yet. And um, decided I was going to start looking around a little bit. Well, I bumped into this literally first dad I'd looked for, first job I'd looked for in 20 years. And they had an ad in the paper for a sales manager for Kershaw Knife. And I thought, well, you know, I know that company. I had a couple of their products and I liked them. So I thought, well, I'll apply. And I applied. And oddly enough, there was a fellow there from Kansas City, which was a home office for Hallmark Cards, and they knew. Knew the brand, and thought, well, you know, if the guy worked for Hallmark, he may be worth talking to. Strange connection, I know, going from frivolous, <laughs> frivolous feminine products to, <laughs> to knives, right? But uh, I got the job and uh, worked for Kershaw for seven years. They were, it was a great company, good for me, Good treated me very, very well. Had a lot of fun there. Learned a lot. A lot more than I expected to learn, because I got a baptism by fire and a lot of things. You go in a, grew up in the corporate world, you got a pretty slim piece of the pie in terms of what your knowledge is and what you think you're pretty hot stuff and then you walk in the front door in a small business and go, holy crap i pretty <laughs> much don't know anything <laughs> yep <clears throat> and then uh was there for seven years around numbers and um meet another fellow that used to work there um launched off and pretty much put together uh in reality the business plan that we developed for kershaw um back in the day and they chose not to do it, no harm, no foul. We chose to do it, and that's kind of the American dream, right, is right. launching off on your own and doing your own thing, and so we did. The first day was April Fool's Day, April 1st, <laughs> 1994. 
<laughs> and there awesome. is some significance to that, I think, in the grand scheme yeah. of things. And we were sitting at a table very much like this, only it was square. And it was called a card table. And I was talking to these guys laughing about it because it's, it was like, we need pencils. <laughs> we need... We need some we need some staplers and we need paper clips and rubber bands. I mean, that's how basic it was, right? Just starting from ground zero. So it's that classic twinkle in your eye kind of a story. But we uh we found some pretty decent uh and willing people in a little tiny island called Taiwan, which wasn't highly regarded as a place to make quality products. Southeast Asia was thought less of, but then the Japanese product back with Kershaw was not highly regarded when Pete Kershaw started to do it. And then Seiki Japan became kind of the place mm-hmm. or one of the places in the in the world to bring in high quality uh, cutlery products, right? Yep. So we went there and we found some guys that uh, were really ready, willing and able to step up from honestly making some pretty low end stuff to some Pretty nice stuff. And uh, so fast forward, 30 years later, kind of reflecting back in those early days, I'm not a knife designer. I'm a business guy. That's what I, you know, I was laughing about wanting, dreaming as a, I mean, I had a pocket knife. I still have my very first pocket knife that my dad gave me. And I cut part of the scale off to see what was underneath it because I just could not not do that. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so it was there has always been a fascination, and I'm, I hunt, I fish, I've been doing that all my life. I, a little 22, and I was, I bought my first 22 for twelve dollars. It was a little Remington boys rifle, single shot, selling birthday cards literally door to door out in the pucker brush in Montana. It's a long bike ride between, <laughs> yep. but the little old ladies love me because oh, I can't not buy my stuff. <laughs> 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 so. Um, but I'm not a knife designer. I'm, a, I'm more of a business guy. I mean, I love what I sell. It's a great community. It's been a lot of fun to get to know a lot of these, a lot of the people, Leo and you, Craig. I'm, you're new to me, but you've been in the business a while. You must be okay. <laughs> well, I hope so. There you go. <laughs> but realizing that I wasn't a knife designer and knowing that we needed to have good quality, design, great designs to go with quality manufacturing, we started to reach out to... Well, we're looking for designs, and back in the day, 30 years ago, there were custom knife makers, out, obviously. It wasn't a big deal. I mean, they were out there. There was a few collaborations that were starting to kind of bubble up, and I remember going to the Guild Show probably in 1994, literally first year, and bumped into a fellow from Alabama by the name of Jim Hammond, and uh, from Arab, not Arab, Arab. Alabama, and uh, we started talking. I told him a little bit about this little company we were getting started and convinced him because this, it, those custom knife makers, I mean, they're smart, solid guys. I mean, they're, they really are. They're artists and they're smart and independent to get them to come on board with. Yeah, some, some, they, some won't do it. Some, they've some never met you, you themselves, right? So. They don't want anything to do with it. So we needed designs. That was the... That was a what, treasure chest. Sorry to interrupt you, Rod. Just, no. just because, you know, we what well, we hear now, but was it difficult to get people to give you a design that you were going to take overseas? Good question. Um, we were really upfront with them. So if there were, Leo, I've, I, I don't remember specifically um, what that challenge was um, because we always tried very much to involve those knife makers with almost all steps of the process, right? So they were signing off. And, you know, most of the most of those collaborations have worked just fine. There's been a few bumps in the roads where we've had some challenges with different personalities, yeah. and it's probably more personality than anything else. And so um, I don't think there was a ton of it, but, you know, they all, well, I would say all, that's a, one of those words, like all never always most of them would prefer to have our stuff made in the U.S. You know, and we're, I, I've always thought that was an awesome thing. I don't manufacture. I'd have been broke a long time ago. I don't know what I'm doing there. I know what it looks like. <laughs> I know my way around the shop floor, but I'm not a manufacturing guy. So that's the reason. I mean, we started overseas. We've been doing it ever since. And we started with, I think, our first USA-made product. 
Uh, Lou, it was with you? I believe so. I think it was that, that Karen Hood. Yeah, the Karen Hood yep. collaboration. I remember when yeah. you guys went down to the shop, and, you know, Mike's still here with us. Yeah. Um, I remember that came up, that it was mm-hmm. the first collaboration. And, you know, I remember Robin was on us, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 you know He's a tiger. No, and, and <laughs> I, I like working with him. Like I told Craig, you know, when I first met him, the email that I received from him, I'm like, man, who is this guy? <laughs> you know, but then you see him and he's a sweetheart of a guy. And I'm like, man, <laughs> I'm like, if I didn't know him, I, I would take this personal. <laughs> but, no, but no, it's always, yeah, I remember, it. you know, it's been a while, 10 years we were talking yeah, about it. Here, so. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Now that was, uh, and, and I think the, the genesis for that too, or, or, to add to that, Leo was, Ron Hood had passed, Correct. Karen's husband, and he was doing a collaboration with Buck Knives. Yep. And um, he passed, and, and Karen was wanting to get into the arena as well. And close friends with Mike, yep. and that's mm-hmm. how it started. So we started talking to Karen about a variety of different things. Buck didn't have an interest, I think. I remember right. I think, I think it, was, it was Chuck. Chuck Buck mm. that wanted to do something to help her out and you know yeah. they were just starting with Ron and then Ron passed away and yeah. he wanted to get something going and then he passes away True. and that's what you know sort of start you know CJ I don't know what you know just kind of dangling out there yeah. unfinished business kind of a thing yeah, yeah. so um, that's you know a little bit of what I remember but sure. I remember she talked more to Mike than you know I was just in the shop or helping Mike out but mm-hmm. not really involved in, in, in what you know what was happening there, but um, it's a little bit of what I remember. Well, Karen kind of paved the way for us with Mike, and uh, I'd met Mike at Blade Show, just casually. You know, just a, got fell in the industry like me, and um, but at any rate, super solid guy, and, and I think yeah. we just got together partially because of personalities and. Yeah, but, Mike. You know, like I always tell these guys when, you know, I I, I was. 15, 15 years old when I met Mike. I'm 41, and, you know, like, knives is what I know how to do because I, I started with him, you know. And um, I, I always, like I said, I, I always tell these guys, Mike could sell a toilet full of crap to anybody. <laughs> you know, he, he was just good at it, and when the way, you know, he just drew people to him. Um, but, yeah, in the industry, you know, there's, there's very few that 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 would that could say that Mike, you know, Mike, something negative about Mike, you know, I never really heard him, but, but yeah, you know, and then you know, the, my first time meeting you was was at Tops. Yeah, I think when you yeah. came, when you came, I down, think you're so. right. But it, it it it's it was the same kind of thing for me. It was and it and it continues to be this way. And you asked about the custom knife makers, and I'm not going to go on because I could wear you out with these old stories and. You and I could drink a beer or two in a few weeks before we came out. But it's that same kind of thing with the, uh, asked about the custom knife makers and offshore and all that stuff. It, there had to be a trust yeah. of pretty significant value for both of us because their name was going to be on it. That was a big deal to them, big Correct. deal to me, big deal to us. And uh, the trust factor from, from that aspect and getting that mutual trust, same thing I think with you and Mike, it was, you know, we're not just a, a, a trying to be a one trick pony with you. We're serious about this, serious about the collaboration with Tops. We think we can bring an element to you. We right. know you can bring a really important element to CRKT. I trust you, you trust us. It's, uh, we talk about Russ Comer and some of those things in a little bit here after we're starting to talk about that. Russ and I have had an agreement for 25 years, and it's a handshake. Yeah. We, we're a little more sophisticated about that much, <laughs> but a little more sophisticated now. But that's, and Russ would tell you that if he was sitting here. He says, Bremer and I, we just, that's what we do. So that's a big part of it, you know, and, and, and I think that's part of our reputation in that crazy little community of custom knife makers and designers is, we try and treat them right, try and honor their wishes and do the best we can. They know some limitations. Correct. Yeah, that gets, that gets less and less common these days, too, to have that that handshake agreement that that people actually honor. Yeah. It's so so uncommon. It's a, it's almost non-existent. Yeah. But 
A lot of the a lot of the early designers with tops are like that too. Yeah, yeah. I bet. I'm not, not surprised. No, no folder that I can go back to and <laughs> see where see what was agreed upon. I right, just have right. to like talk yeah. to them and figure yeah. it out. I get it. Yep. Yeah. Totally get it. <clears throat> so, Doug, where do you come in? You know, so people. Oh man. Little... So, Rod left Kershaw to start CRKT, and and uh, Pete Kershaw hired me to replace Rod. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> So, I, yeah. I taught Doug how to spend money. Yeah. 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 So, so I was there at Kershaw sweeping up Rod's mess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to get personal. Oh, okay. All right. We're getting in the weeds right. here. Yeah. The weeds yes. here so. You remember that legal term, quid pro quo? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so saddle up, cowboy. Saddle up. <laughs> no, so, so, yeah, so I was at Kershaw and, uh, um, for 10 years, and then Rod's partner retired, and, and Rod called me up and said, hey, Doug. Retired. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> and uh, Rod called me up and said, Hey, Doug, I need help. You you, you want to come over? And I, you know, uh, Kai with Jones Kershaw was, was very good to me, but the, it, Japanese owned. And, and, you know, it's hard working for a different culture and everything. And I was like, Yeah, to go to work for an American. You know, I knew Rod from all the shows and bumping elbows. And like, Hell yeah, I'm in. So I've been here 20 years now. 20 years. 20 years. 10 years. I tell a story about uh, Doug was a little paranoid when we started talking to him because I called him up and said, hey, Doug, uh, my old partner is no longer here. I'm going to need some, need some help, and I think you might be the guy. And we were, <laughs> we, we were meeting in the parking lot at Costco because Doug didn't want to get caught. <laughs> I think I think I think he had a wig on at the time. And, you know, a cloak over his head. <laughs> I had a really good job at Kershaw. I didn't want to risk losing. That. Case it didn't work out. He was oh, no yeah, you know, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, enough. the deal. It was like, oh, I can't be seen. You know? <laughs> anyway, carry on. Yeah. So so yeah so um, yeah so I came in and uh, kind of helped Rod and and <laughs> and you know helped them with product and sales and marketing and yep. and. Uh, we, you know, we've grown quite a bit yeah. since I came on board. Yeah. It's been it's been a great ride. I mean, the the coolest part is the collaboration part. You know, Rod has always you know instilled in the whole company that you know we work with people or we treat people like we'd want to be treated, and uh, it's it's worked fantastic. I mean, the Russ Comer relationship he's had with him. We've gone to Alaska and fish fish for uh, king salmon and halibut and and you know done a bunch of fun things with with Russ and. All the other knife makers that we work with. I mean, it's and just. Why been... don't we do that with our knife makers? I know. Let's get, <laughs> we, we, need, we need to get some of those guys. <laughs> yeah, it was super cool because Russ yeah. was a he was a fishing guide and a hunting guide. Big game, all, yeah. Yeah, big game hunter. So he knew he knew what to do, man. We'd, we'd go out. Yeah, but awesome. when you go fishing with Russ, it, you're in, you know, it never gets dark in Alaska in July, you know. So oh, you're, yeah. You're, yeah. You're all night. We had last time we were in bed. Okay, first one to catch a fish gets to go back to the room and take a nap <laughs> because <laughs> we were flat worn out. He catches, of course, he always catches the first and the biggest fish. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yeah. So old people. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a, a great collaboration, and we're super excited to be working with you guys, and really enjoy the relationship and. Enjoyed going out and seeing your operation. I mean, watching. Well, that, yeah, that was the, the, that was the first time you went out to Yeah, Kansas, huh? that's the first that's time right. I was out there. And just seeing the amount of work that you put into it. And then, you know, before yeah. hearing that, you know, you were heat treating these things, you know, till midnight, you know, I just by hand. I mean, it's just so yeah, cool. Yeah, you guys got to see pretty much every step, which a lot of we, we, we can do with a lot, with a lot of of. of, of designs that we do but we sort of planned it out you know because you guys gave us plenty of time to, to plan it out to have a knife or you know some knives in each station throughout yeah. the whole process yeah uh, so pretty much like i told you guys i'm dedicating this day to you yeah. guys yeah you know yeah. so from cutting the steel to literally putting it in the box yeah wow. yeah nice. well, it's, i wish i'd have been there yeah, yeah you they didn't tell me <laughs> yeah, you missed the um, the other cool part too, right? This collaboration with Vegas Vegas Ford. The Vegas yeah, Ford. Yeah, yeah. When, we went there after USN. Uh, no, no uh, right, right before. before it was right oh, before. right before USN. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. you came in two days before. Yeah, that was yeah. super cool to see the the Damascus actually being yeah, made like from from scratch. You know, so yeah, so, this is our second time our second time being there in Vegas Forge. 
Yeah. Yeah. The first time, and the first time we didn't see much of the actual like work being done. We were just kind of hanging out, getting to know them and, mm. and talking to them and, and whatnot. And then this time we actually got to see all the steps, which, which was cool for me too. Cause I hadn't seen that. I've seen, I've seen it done like by a custom maker making one billet, but they have kind of a production setup going. And that was, that was cool. It was very, it was not what I expected, but it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. and on yeah. their on their side too, they sort of planned it out the same. They had it, mm-hmm. you know, for each station, so we could get that whole thing on film too. So yep, yeah, yeah it was cool, super cool. But yeah, so and now that we get into that, you know, yeah. people are thinking, what are they talking about? Well, yeah. what, what are, are we talking is, about? So, yeah, so, so we're really, launching. This is not why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now. Come on, Kyle. You told me this is what we were going to do. <laughs> So we're launching <laughs> launching two uh, Russ Comer Designs uh, hunting knives, and uh, uh, we're doing a limited run, 210 pieces, on the yep. De- uh, Vegas Forge Damascus version. Um, it's the random pattern. It's the AEBL. AEBL. With uh, 302. 302, yep. To, to give it the look. So it's a stainless uh, Damascus. Stainless with- Damascus, yep. Walnut, walnut handle with uh, uh, red liners to just kind of touch it off a little bit very super nice um you're heat treating these all by hand i mean yeah were, yeah like said on two well you know the tuesday before we we had we, we came down yeah i was i was in my custom shop so you have to do it in your custom shop because just because i have the kiln the, there's a kiln in there that that i that i know how to use brand new one you know yeah, it, yeah. Nice and nice and clean, yeah, and so, fancy. And so, uh, yeah. you know, and, and it's so, got Wi-Fi and, was, and everything. Ooh. <laughs> that's not that's not even a joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it actually really. does. Yeah. Yeah, but the only reason it has Wi-Fi, to, <laughs> Craig makes a <it> sound. <laughs> it's all. Awesome. It's cool. You know, it is, that thing is cool. I'm excited there, about it. Never there's seen a, that. Yeah, yeah, there's a little. There's a little beep that it gives when it's ready. Oh. I can't hear that beep. Oh. It's like really. Yeah, his hearing's know, messed up. And, and so, it, my phone will go off. Oh. And so, you know, if then, I'm doing something, or sometimes I get distracted working on a knife, yeah. and it takes, so it's like 20 minutes that you leave them in there. And when there's 20 minutes, I'm trying to make a custom knife. Oh, you know, I'm I like, see. I'm not going to sit here and just look at the clock. So I start doing something else. And sometimes I get into it, really, you know, and I'm, and I'm like, I'm just going to finish this. And I look at the thing, five minutes, I can finish this. And I just keep going. Well, if my phone don't go off... Then something there's a problem. Then he's gonna he's gonna yeah. overcook them, and that's not yeah, good. So, yeah. <laughs> and so that's why that's why it has Wi-Fi. You know? So the so for the knife geeks, what's the difference when you're heat treating the Damascus stainless Damascus versus so, the carbon steel? So carbon steel, you know, Benny. A, a lot of people you know know what Benny does for us, but uh, Benny will do a, a differential heat treat that we that we call right. it on on 1095, and on the stainless, we do that. And a, and a stainless steel wrap, we wrap individually each one and then stick them in, you know, we do a 20 minute. 20 yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a little more to it than that, but it's about yeah. a 20 minute soak at the, at the temperature you're, you're supposed to hit. Okay. Um, but yeah, so you're like your 1095 for us, we're doing it in a forge. There's, you can do kiln, kiln as well. There's different ways to do it, but we do, we do it in a forge and oil quench. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's still kind of one by one, but the the oil quench is the main difference. Mm-hmm. So with uh with a stainless Damascus, you're not quenching that in oil. This steel actually could be we could quenched be in oil. To, yeah. But uh the the way we're doing it, it makes it a little a little bit quicker and a little bit faster to to do some of the cleanup and buffing afterwards than if we had to grind off a bunch of scale. We okay. do we do something called a plate quench. Okay. So the the they're aluminum plate, one inch thick. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Inch, yeah, I think one, one inch, inch thick, thick, and they're pretty much frozen. Oh. So we take them out of the freezer, get them ready to go right before they come out, and then put them in into you know individually stack them in between the plates, and then but you're you're doing this in a matter of seconds, seconds, seconds. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. That's you have up. to you have to cool it fast. Yeah. You know that, that's that's what a lot of people don't. The, I think a lot of people in the knife world, they talk a lot about the steel and they gloss over the part that actually makes it a knife, that, that heat treat. Like you have to introduce that that heat to a really rapid cooling or you don't actually get the hardness. Right. Um, but that also introduces a lot of stress, and a lot of uh, a lot of potential for issues. And so that's why the temper is, is after that. And the temper is pretty easy. That's That's just a lower temperature for a couple hours. One or two times, depending on the steel. Sometimes there's the sometimes the uh, the sub zero treatment is important, but um, 
But yeah, that's that main thing that makes it a knife is that get it really hot and cool it down really fast. Yeah. And so something the uh, custom knife makers taught me a long, long time ago, and that's the steel is a super important part, but the really critical part is mm -hmm. the heat treat. Absolutely, got to do it right. You can take a really, really nice piece of premium steel and mess it up on the heat treat and flip the coin. Take a pretty average piece of steel, the really high, hot dog heat treat. Yeah. Yeah. And you, so you make quality real, bleeds. Yep. Yeah. Make a real story there. And see, with this one being stainless steel, a lot of people <clears> think, oh, you know, the Rockwell, you know, is 61, 62, you know, not, not with the stainless Damascus. You know, this, you're going to get it the hardest you're going to get it's about 58. And that's and it's 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 tough too because your normal Rockwell tester is I mean it's basically a, a diamond that's hitting the metal and the dent that it makes tells it how right. hard it is. Right. Well, if you got a soft piece and a hard piece next to each other and your 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 reading's going to be a little tricky right. with that. Um, so it's, yeah. we're probably hitting about fifty eight to fifty nine on these when we're done with the temper mm -hmm. and everything. But we're doing we're doing three three marks to get the right one. Yeah. Every single one I'm testing. Oh, nice! I told Craig, I don't. I'm not going to risk it on these. I'm like, we're going to test every single one, and so yeah, every single well, one. Well, that's a, that's a great hardness because you can still yeah. sharpen it. Oh, absolutely, field, mm -hmm. absolutely. You, know, you can yeah. be out there and no, so you know, working on your elk and sharpen it up if it does go dull. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, the um, super. It was when I was out at your place and saw Benny heat treating the the carbon yeah. steel version. You would have loved it, Rod. He's, I mean, it's. It's art. I mean, yeah, it's, it's it was so cool because he's the, been doing it for so long that he makes it look so easy. You got the machines <laughs> in the background, which is kind of the science, yeah. and then you got Benny looking yeah. looking at the color and the steel yeah. and and knowing when to when to uh, quench it in oil. I mean, that's that's art. Yeah, when you get that color just right. Yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. Benny's done that enough. He doesn't even he doesn't even have to think about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he's just got it. He just got it down. He's like, yep, it's good. That's awesome. Um, yeah, and then we have a production version, which will be in the line um, for a long time. And this is, uh, again, 1095. Yep, with 1095. With a Cerakote. Yep. And uh, it's got a micarta handle that Benny hand shapes. Hand shapes yep. yep. You know, these, this is not done on a machine, Rod. This is done by hand. Well, that's what you were telling me. You know, then we, again, we stick with the red liners to, to make it tie into mm -hmm. to the uh, limited edition one. And, and they both come with just amazing leather shoes. I mean, they're just... The, the feel of this leather is just incredible. The snap is unique. It's it's a very cool sheath. It's a perfect it's a, it's a perfect fit for that knife. Yeah. That well, one. it's a custom yeah. sheath look, yeah, right? And it fits in nicely with the custom. I mean, this is this is a custom knife, <clears throat> right? Yeah. Yeah. Leo, he yeah. treated him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. We did a lot by hand. You know, even, even, even with those, the we flats, did a lot. Even cleaning yeah. the flats. You know, maybe we should put that in the marketing literature on the heat treat if that's okay. No, anything, anything. <laughs> yeah, heat treat. I mean, that's, a, that's a legit, legit yeah. part of a yeah. collaboration, Absolutely. right? Yeah, that's yeah. super. So, cool. how does how does this how does this knife come to CRKT, or why this knife for your 30th anniversary? Yeah, so we wanted to celebrate the relationship that Rod's had with with Russ, with Russ. for all these years, and we wanted to collaborate with you know Vegas Forge and and Tops, and uh, you know make it an American made collaboration and just it really symbolizes everything that that crkt is you know stands for because we we seen we seen on the website he has quite a few he's got quite a few, quite a few designs, designs yeah there. yeah yeah it started with the um it started with the bear claw 20 25 years ago was the well, was, was the russ russ comer bear claw which this one here is is the like the rafting version you know it's got the blunt tip at the at the uh, on the tip, so yeah, uh, EMT it. rafting, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I met Russ. Um, yeah, in the twenty-five years ago, I'd have to go back and really, look, absolutely, to to pin the date down. But uh, our good friends at AG Russell, uh, AG, when he was still alive, he called me up and said, "Bramery said you might want to talk to this young knife maker up in Anchorage. His name is Russ Comer." I said, "Okay." I mean. AG was a legend, right? He knew yeah, his yeah, stuff, yeah. and everybody had a huge amount of respect. And he he knew what we were doing and kind of how we were going about our business and the the design element. And uh, he says, got, he's got this, uh, this cool little product called a bear claw. He says, I think that I think you might got you guys might be able to do something with that. 
So I flew up to Seattle because Russ had come down for a custom knife show and had breakfast, shook hands, kind of did the deal. And um, that design, yeah, I mean, there was a couple of... Uh, it was it was just it was just a neat piece, right, to start with, and the whole indexing with your finger, and it's just an extension of your hand. The, the bear claw thing was he was the woman that uh, his his wife at the time <clears throat> worked at a, a Ford dealership in Anchorage, and he was a little bit nervous about her walking home at night or walking to his, her car at night and walking down the street. And so I remember the tagline on one of the photographs we did in one of the early catalogs for uh, this was for I don't know what it was and independent women. So it was all about self defense and protection because once you get that the sharp pointed one in your hand, you can't you it's going to be really hard yeah, to get rid of it. So out. you can walk down the street with this in your hand just like this, and um, nobody's going to take it away from you. You're going to you just say you're going to have a pretty good chance of at least getting somebody's attention. And then the whole concept, and Russ spent a lot of time, because uh, he, he was a hunting and fishing guy in Alaska for 20 years, the, the, uh, there's always a handful of push, bush pilots would end up catching their, their floats and their skis when they'd come in for a landing, flip the plane over in the water, and drown, because they couldn't, their body weight, their mass was down against their uh, belts right so here they are upside down in a plane water coming in they can't get under the strap to cut themselves loose so you go up to alaska and there's an awful lot of bear claws strapped to the the yoke on the <laughs> on them and that's what they're there for i mean he he's he's always been that very purpose-driven guy when it comes to design especially kind of unique specific markets and that's where this bear claw came in so that's that's how i got to know russ and uh he's just Russ is uh, probably one of the most intelligent guys I've ever met. He's not a classically trained engineer, but I promise you, you could sit him right across the table from, from some of the best. And uh, if there's a problem to solve, there's a pretty good chance Russ Comer will be able to solve it for you. So I've given him some stuff over the years where I've found, purchased, whatever, some mechanisms, some art of some sort. I said, Russ, this doesn't work right. But I like the idea. Can you fix this? <laughs> he loves that. But it drives him insane, too. And I know there was one called the Fulcrum that I asked him to, to make it work. He said, Burma, you have no idea how many times I threw that across the effing garage. <laughs> 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 and um, so he's just become one of those really good. He's, he sits in a tree stand. 150 days a year hunting whitetails because he's a, he's obsessed with whitetail deer. It's an, it, he genuinely, it's a sickness. I think he's got a, there's a support group and Russ leads it. He says, I'm Russ Comer and I've been in, well, I haven't been in a deer stand for nine days. <laughs> <clears throat> but we've hunted and fished together and for a long, long time. And he's, uh, he's a good friend. He's a, he's a real close friend and we talk regularly. And he says, you know, Bremer, if you don't like it, tell me. I'm good. I don't think you, I don't expect you to do everything that I do. I don't expect you to bring everything that I produce to market. But he is a genuinely talented, probably one of the best freehand grinders that there is. A guy I can, I remember Kit Carson, who is our M16 legend to me. I mean, he keeps the lights on and the people paid at, at uh, CRKT. Still sells uh, since 1999, I think we did that. And Kit was up there in Alaska doing a show, and Russ was in there. And Russ had been, oh, I don't know, custom knife making for a couple of years. And we'd started with him with Russ. We'd been with Kit for a while, and Kit was judging. And Kit picked up this knife at Russ's, and he said, I, he didn't know it was Russ Comer's knife. He'd blindfold himself, and he'd pick up the knives, and he'd take his, I don't have fingernails, but he'd take his fingernails without his, uh, to check the grind, and he'd go back and forth like this to see how even it was. Mm -hmm. And then he'd take off, he'd, you know, he'd rate them, and in his mind he'd set them aside. And then he'd take the blindfold off, so to speak, literally. And uh, he said, he went up to Russ and he said, you know, you really piss me off. <laughs> Russ says, oh, I don't know, how am I going to do this? <laughs> it's just legend in the knife world. And I pissed him off, and I don't even yeah. know him. <laughs> Sorry, is that language acceptable? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you can say much worse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll keep it as cl- cl- I'll try and keep it classy. Fair enough. Anyway, um, and, and, and Russin is, you know, naivete says, God, he says, Mr. Carson, I'm so sorry. I don't know. What did I do? He says, there's no way somebody is, uh, that can grind that well. Should, you should, should be able to grind that well after you've only been in the business doing this for a few years. <laughs> he says, it's perfect. So that's, I mean, he's, he's an artist too. But he's, um, because he hunts and fishes so much and spends so much time in a deer stand or in a boat catching walleyes, he, he knows his stuff. So when he's talking about why, that, why this knife is shaped the way it's shaped, he's got a reason. Yeah. You know, he's absolutely positively got a reason, and that's what I, one of the things that I've always enjoyed about Russ. And um, because of that, we've done a lot of Russ Comer designs over the years. We talk about Russ as kind of being our hunt fish guy, and he really is, but he also does an awful lot. He works in other genres too, right? And I told you about the Fulker, which was kind of a finger gadget trick thing that Russ used to try and, uh, or um, Doug rather, at shows would take him and hand them off to people and say, I'll buy the first beer if you can open this in a minute. I don't think he ever bought a beer, but he's cheap too. <laughs> well, so. The one guy, the one guy did give it was me. a woman. Uh, oh, she just threw it. She, she just threw it on the floor and it opened. <laughs> I remember because she was a vet yeah. and her husband was an operator. He was a he was a real deal. And he was he was he was going to rotate out. He was going on deployment. Yeah. And this woman, it was like milliseconds. She's going. <laughs> wow. You win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Russ's uh, mirror finish, his mirror polish on his customs is unbelievable. I mean, I wish we could do that. People yeah. underestimate how hard that is. Yeah. That's when you when you buy a knife that has that kind of polish on it, somebody spent a lot of time making yeah. it look like that. Yeah. And, and there's you know, like again, there's some of the makers that it's not it's it's easy for them. Yeah, they know what couple grits to use to get it to that. Yeah, you know, and so, yeah, that 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 that's talent. Yeah, uh, that you can't really find anymore. <laughs> you know, now you throw a coating on it, and, you know. Yeah. So we we never got into that. We always, since the beginning, was powder coat. You know, Mike was law enforcement, military. That's who we catered to. Sure. That's what it was, and so we never got into that. You know, learning how to do that. Um, well, Robin will send you an email. Oh yeah, <laughs> he, we, 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 caught, we caught him today. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. he gave me he gave me a, he gave me a catalog. He's like, look at this look at this machine. <laughs> yep, yeah. we'll be checking that one yeah. out. Yeah. Oh, the name of the knife is uh, called Soldatna, and that's where we'd gone fishing a couple times with Russ. We go in there and go float the Kenai and catch kings. And Rod always seems to catch the biggest and and the first, and gets to take a nap first. It pisses me off. <laughs> I love that part. Oh my god! Oh man! I don't know. You felt so highly of that. <laughs> yeah, Leo's thing when whenever we go fishing is always whoever whoever catches the last fish has to gut him. Oh, yeah. so that's oh. typically me. That's typically yeah. That's usually. I, I have another one I do with my grandsons and my son-in-law, and uh, so we go out either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and so you know we're in the Pacific Northwest, and so we go out and fish one of the coastal rivers. First fish, most fish, biggest fish, and we jump off the dock into Grandpa's pond. For every one you lose. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> no. The pond's about 50 degrees that time of year. <laughs> My grandson, he caught, I don't know, the, the last time we did this. I think it's been outlawed, actually. <laughs> we, he went in twice because everybody had to go in at least once. That was the rule. Yeah. Okay. This was just before Thanksgiving dinner. So, you know, we had to hit Ooh. the hot shower to warm up before yep. we cut yeah. the tur- carved the turkey. So he got to go in twice because he didn't catch the biggest. I caught the biggest. And he caught the most. I went in three times. I could barely crawl out. Of the <laughs> I thought the old man was going to die on the edge. And son-in-law, he might still be in the pond. I'm not sure because he had to go in four times. So oh, you guys work on that one. You got some pretty cold water up there in, in Idaho yeah, Falls this time of year. 50 degrees in water is cold. It's yeah, it's oh, cold. that'll take your breath away fast. And it did. Yeah, <laughs> I, I couldn't climb up the, the ladder oh, on the dock. I bet. I bet. 
<laughs> so speaking of the grandson, so Rod is, you know, Russ made this for Rod to take on a hunting trip <clears throat> that they went together on. And then the idea was for Rod to give this to his grandson. And uh, That's the knife that's that in custom. my office right now. Oh, yeah. Rod would like that back. At some You're point. getting it back. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking good care of that thing. I'm, I don't want that responsibility, but Well, that's awesome we because it. the ones I give Doug never show back up. I should check his safe, though. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that's probably a good idea. <laughs> right. Now look what you've done. you created a criminal. He's going to oh steal lives God. like you oh, do. Oh, no, no, no. Trust me. That one's coming back. I don't, I don't want that. Uh, I don't want that one on me. That's a pretty one, isn't it? It, it is. is. It is a good looking knife. Yeah, yeah. and that's Absolutely. got that mirror polish too. That, it does. Yeah, and the bol- the bolsters. You, you there's zero seam yeah. between the pins and the bolster. That's um. You cannot. Yeah. You, like if you didn't know where they were, that you wouldn't. You you won't know. Yeah. You yeah. can't find them. It's that yeah. polish again. Yeah. The way he put that polish in yeah. in the bolster. He's in. he's a master yeah. at that. He's, he's, yeah. he's he he always sends me pictures of stuff. He's, his his daughter's getting married in August, and he sent me oh, a nice. picture of his wedding. The cake knife. <laughs> and, his, and his yellow lab is in the background. I said, does the, la- does the dog come with? He says, you can't have my dog. <laughs> but this cake knife, it's just, it's, like this. It, it's, it's unbelievable. It's just spectacular. And it's all mirror polished. And I forget, Macedon, I don't know, on the handle, it's something special. Oh, nice. Something, some, something petrified. And, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Something that's petrified and old. So Right on. But that's what's going to happen. I mean, it's it's a family business. It has been from the very beginning. It still is. And um, we like that part. You know, we're an American company, and uh, like you, I mean, it's just bootstrapped from the very beginning, and I didn't have any sugar daddies over the pond to help me do anything. <laughs> I, I, roll, I roll some IRA so many times I got dizzy. I don't think the federal government's ever going to catch up with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you do what you got to do, right, yeah. to keep the, keep the wheels on the bus. Um, so, you know, that is there another generation coming up behind me? I don't know. I don't know if my grandsons are going to be interested in getting into the business, but my youngest grandson likes to hunt fish with gramps. And so I'm pretty sure that he knows he's getting all my fishing rods and guns anyway, when I'm gone. So this one will, this one will probably end up in his hands at some point that custom life. And that, and Russ does that. That's part of his DNA too. He'll build stuff. So if we go fishing someplace or we go, we've been to, been fortunate to go to Africa a number of times with Russ. We like to do that. And, he always shows up. If there's somebody new in camp that we've not gone to, he he, he makes a custom knife for him. So they've got something really special to for that remember trip. that trip. And uh, that's kind of how Russ rolls. He's just that kind of guy. He doesn't think about it. He, oh, I got X number of dollars of material. I put 12 hours into this thing or 20 hours or however any hour. Yeah. And they... Uh, that's that, what it is about a custom knife, I think. Pretty amazing. You know, it's it's you don't think of what... You spend Super personal, it, you know. Um, of course, when you buy the material, you're trying to get the best price, you know. If, yeah. Because some of this is really expensive, but you know, like if it's something I'm making for Craig because of his birthday or something, I'm not like, hey, Craig, I sent eighty five, and I'm gonna take a <laughs> yeah. Here's check. here's <laughs> how much this cost me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, it is. It's something that that, yeah. that you just more than anything you what you put into it. You want it to be perfect. Who cares what it costs? Right. But it's have you 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 probably I, Leo. You know better than I do. I know you do. Um, we're as we're. I, I ask. I've asked. I, I'm ignorant in that respect. I've learned since, but to ask a custom knife maker, well, tell me what kind of what you got into this thing, because I'm just curious. Oh man. That's like the holy grail. You do not ask that question, and most of them would just soon hit you. I tell you, well, I did get a you know a custom knife maker that I used to work with in uh, Barry Gallagher in Montana, a super nice guy, and he was, um, you know, he told me, and I and he put it all into focus for me. Kind of gave me a little peek behind the curtain with the custom knife maker world, and that was he said, you know, Rod, he was working on a knife he called a Green Hornet. It was an automatic. Can't remember what the skills were, but they were green. And uh, he says, "I've got like fifteen hundred dollars in material, and I'll have two hundred hours in this thing." I'm kind of doing the math in my head, and it didn't really matter, but it was kind of a like I said, a peek behind the curtain. He said, "The hard part," he says, "I'm a hundred ninety hours into this thing, and I've got ten hours to go, and I can get away with some character marks, you know, or maybe I didn't do it exactly right." He says, "When I get to that spot." 
the pressure is so intense for me to finish that up flawlessly because he had a doctor that was buying this and building the collection for his son. Mm. He says, that's where I fall apart. He says, if I screw up then, it's not only the 1500 bucks, but it's 200 hours worth of labor I put into that thing. And I can't, I can't undo that. So I, that was, that was fascinating. I'll never forget that. Yeah, and I've stopped nice. asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Th- yeah. These custom makers, what, the, some, some, what they charge don't even cover right. half of their time. Right. You know, yeah. some of these guys really dedicate weeks into making a custom blade That's something. and get 500 bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Then you have the Michael Walkers of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't wrap my head around a $160,000 folder, but, yes. I mean, he sells every one of them. Yeah. When we first Artists. did, when we did that uh, Blade Texas. Yeah. Uh, it was in the stockyards. First mm-hmm. first show mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, when Blade bought that custom show out. Um, so I go up to a table and, you know, it doesn't look nice, so... I didn't know the kind of show we well, I had an idea where we were at, but not the cost on these blades. And so I see a little folder, maybe three and a half inches long, and I'm like, you know, I can carry that, you know, custom one. I'm like, see how much it is, you know. I'm like, may I pick that up? He's like, yeah, please do. So I grab it. I'm looking at it, closing it. I'm like, what are you asking for this? Like, 15000 <laughs> Leo's <laughs> <laughs> never put a knife down so nope. softly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did all that. And oh, he's like, yeah, and then he started telling me, he's like, yeah, little um, screw holes, they're all diamonds. Oh, they're man. real diamond. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I thought that was just a shiny, a shiny screw head. You know, but then you start looking at it really? close and you're like, yeah, yeah. those are real diamonds. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so, yeah, now I'm just looking, I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, isn't, but, isn't it neat when you get to it and you sit down with a custom knife maker that's got at their top of their game the absolute positive so I mentioned Michael Walker yeah. I don't think there's going to be too many people that are going to argue that he is at the top of his game right when oh. you d- can get that kind of price no, for a you knife you can get that absolutely and we've worked with other guys like that Ken Onion's a good example um, man it's just it's just an honor to see them as they kind of progress and they get to a spot where you say Ah, man, I hope I can. In fact, I had this conversation with Donna Lake. We worked with Ron Lake for a good number of years. And she, I, I said to Donna at the Oregon show when I said, oh, Donna, and this is a long time ago. I hope someday I'm able to afford one of Ron's knives. They were like 10 grand to start. And it, it doesn't matter. He'll be dead by the time he gets to you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, boy, was that a wrap. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> And I'm thinking, well, you know, he's not that old, but that's how far backlog those guys are when they get to that level. It's stunning to me. Oh, yeah. Wow. And then when you talk about uh, custom knives to somebody that's not kind of in the community, and it's not that they don't appreciate, but you tell them about the prices at some of this stuff. And you, and they there's such a disconnect between a knife and a piece of art mm-hmm. that these are artists. They just happen to work in this medium, right? Yep. So it's a it's a it's a fun thing to see when they get to that spot where they finally, after all those years of grinding it out, pun intended. And see, I don't know, I don't know if you you'll see those guys again. Yeah. Because now it's they're growing, and they're making you know big money on them, and then they go like, hey, let, who can produce this for me? See if we can make them faster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you lose all that. Right. You know. The design is there, you know, like say us, we'll make it for them, but we're manufacturing right. production, you know, big quantities and, and you lose, you lose what he, what you had. Right. And so like these guys, you know, the, you know, to, to be able to meet people like that again, I don't know if we ever do it again. Yeah. yeah that era may be, that door may be kind of closed and you may be right. Yeah. Yeah, you, may just be right. The, you know, I, yeah. I think about it and, and sometimes we're talking and, and I'm like, who? who tell me yeah, who, who that that you say a name and you recognize them like this mm-hmm. yeah you know you say in an old name then you're like man yeah you'll never get one of those names right you right you know but i don't know it's yeah now, and now it's not really of what's coming out and now it's how many can you make and how much yeah you know so well, well mark has certainly changed yeah yeah and it's um and i gotta i gotta yield because back when i started um we were kind of disruptors, um, and 
there's disruption in the market now, and but I think slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, and uh, we're going to stay true to our core. Uh, to Doug's point, and uh, it's a fun business to be a part of. We we enjoy the relationships. We're tr- tickled with the relationship with you gentlemen, and yeah, likewise with us. Uh, you know, it, Playing with the big guys, you know, it oh, like, oh, you know, like oh, you're flattering you know. us. Go, go <laughs> ahead, try it, do it go again. <laughs> again, do it again. You know, but no, seriously, you know, like from us being tops, and I always see us as a small company. You know, yeah, we have a bunch of employees, but we do a lot of handwork. We yeah. do a lot of uh, stuff like that. But you know, um, yeah, we, you know, I put pride into what we do. I love you know, the grit there. You know, yeah, I do. There's yeah. a, so. there's a. Like I, I, ten years I've worked here, and I still it still surprises me how much we get done mm. with how much hands on there is. Like when I when I see numbers and how many knives got sent out and and this and that, I'm like, but we only have this many people. Like how did I yeah. I know how long this stuff takes. Like I've done a lot of it, and it's like how do we how do we get that many done? Yeah. It's crazy, you know. And and uh, but there there's we're we're in that niche between between production and custom where it's a production atmosphere but we after it's after it's heat treated almost everything else is hand finished mm. and we do as much of that as we can to kind of keep that that hands-on feel that artsy feel to it and not just this is this was mass produced you know as many as possible and and it's just it's crazy to see how many get done in a year or in a week or in a month in that place with well, many I don't, people. I don't know if uh, if that was normal, but when we're out there at, at your place and going through it, and we go to dinner that night, and you guys are jabbing each other. And oh, that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's us. Yeah. Kyle and I left there going, yeah, these guys are having fun. Yeah, that's, these guys what, are, that's what we do. That's like you know, you can ask any one of my guys. You know, like I always tell them. I'm not your normal boss. Yeah, you know, we're gonna say <laughs> and we're clear, gonna talk yeah. crap to each other, and and you know, and when it comes down to work, we work. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I tell these guys, get drunk, do it. Yeah. Be ready to go at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. my only rule. You know, yeah. do what you got to do. But, and, you know, we got a good team. Yeah. Got a good you got team. A, and it's, I mean, just from, know. from the outside going through your place, I mean, the team is incredible. And yeah. uh, having you there to say, hey, let me show you how to do this yeah. is such a huge and That's asset. one thing, you know, growing up and, and especially working under Mike. Yeah. Mike wanted something done and he wanted me to do it, but right now. Yeah. You know, don't don't give it to me in a couple of weeks. Let me see it here in an hour. Yeah. And so I learned to do everything and then I taught it my way to sort of, you know, get it to that same pace, I guess. Right. Um and so that I think that's what helped us out a lot. Is me learning how to do it and then showing somebody. Well you started out cleaning yeah. restrooms, right? Yeah, that's that's <laughs> what my job was. Literally Mike hired me to keep a bathroom that, that a lady would let us borrow because she was always mad because it was when the guys left the, sh- the, the the bathroom, it was just black. You know, they were, they were hand grinding everything. And so, yeah. yeah, my older brother worked there, and he told him, um, bring my little brother in. He's like, he, he, he's literally right down the street in high school. Yeah. Like, let him let him do that. And so, yeah, that's what my job That was, was. your job. Yeah. And then One, you just learned. And like you said, I mean, part of the, like, the company culture that, that Leo creates is, like, we're going to get it done. Yeah. One way or another, we're going to get it done. And so, I mean... There are, when I compare how things go here to other jobs that I've been in, when something goes wrong, that's when you start to see like what people are made of and how, what they're going to do. And when stuff goes wrong, Leo still jokes around. Yeah. He's still having a good time. Like we'll still, we'll still mess around while we're running all over town, trying to find some stupid thing that we need for the show that we forgot or broke or didn't show up on time or whatever, you know? And, and like when other people would just be stressing and be in a, terrible mood and just making everybody else unhappy leo's talking crap and like you know just jabbing people and everybody's everybody's having a good time yeah. still even though yeah there's there's stress it's like whatever we'll figure it yeah, out you know we'll, i've we'll always said you know you make if i make it stressful everybody's not producing they're not gonna help you Right. You know, make it bad and they're not going to help you. But I just blame John and then, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. And get him a Capri yeah. Sun and, and he's <laughs> happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> get him a couple of things of Kool-Aid and he's <laughs> back to normal. Yeah. Throw a chicken in there and he's, he's all <laughs> in. You fit right, you fit right in, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> so this, oh, is, this is what we were doing back yep. at home, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, John. So anything we're missing out, anything we're leaving out? 
Uh, where, oh, yeah. Where, where can people find these? Where, you know, this, yeah, this yeah. is going to be a hot item. So. Yeah, so, so the, the um, Damascus version will be on CRKT.com only. That's the only place it'll be available. And 210 total 210 pieces Pier, 500 bucks each uh all he traded by leo himself so yeah i'm, gonna, I'm definitely <laughs> yeah. doing all these so. oh, yeah those yeah. handles so. are hand shaped everything there's there's this is yeah there's 210 but they are they are yeah, hand done definitely really custom yeah. knives yeah. we got a serial number uh no no we we did the blade art on it um it, it's we were a little we were there and we we're a little apprehensive about marking the blade with the Damascus, you know. But it came out nice. Yeah, it turned out they yeah, turned out good. So that was good. And then the production version will be available at dealers and CRKT.com. And uh, again, ten ninety five with the micarta handle and and uh, two hundred dollars. And heat treated by Benny. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if you've ever met Benny, you. You know. Have uh, you seen it in some of our videos? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, guys, again, it was an honor to have you guys yep. on, on, you know, a company like you guys to, to be on the top lady grind. You know, it's, oh, it's, it's great a big to be here. It's so. a big deal. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Appreciate that. Then especially having Rod, you know, we were, yeah. we were talking, like, would, would he jump on a podcast? And Doug's like, I think so. Yeah. Because you know, so. he'd been telling you I was in formaldehyde, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 He's just in the corner over there. We don't know if we can wheel him down there. <laughs> I didn't yeah. tell you he was a talker, though. I mean, he can, yeah, no, yeah, he, he can That's, talk. Yeah. No, no, That's it's awesome. it's it's great. I mean, these these types of conversations are are important. I think, especially what we're talking about. You know, like wh who's the next generation and where are they? Like they're hopefully listening to this and and gaining some knowledge and some some ideas and some inspiration to start their own thing and keep it going. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, and so. being in the knife world, you know, a lot of people think like, oh, uh, Tops is competing against CRKT or or, or whoever. There's, no, no, no like, there's, it's a big community. That's yes. what people that are outside of this need to understand. Like right. we're in it to help each other out. Right. You know. So well, let me add just a little bit to that since yeah. I've been dubbed the talker of the group. You know? <laughs> 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 like I think I learned from Doug, but um, I, you know, the old line about uh, a rising tide floats all boats. I believe that, and people will call bullshit on me from time to time when I say things like that, but. Truly, I mean, no matter where or how you sell or market your knives, it's important that the category is is vital. Um, I want you guys to rip it. Yeah, we're going to compete. That's okay. I like competition. I like to yeah. win. It's a good thing. But I like it when people are pushing. And when we're pushing as a community and these custom knife makers are bringing their A game to us, whether it's an, uh, a mechanism or a design something simple on a sheet that just like, well, I never thought about that. Yeah. It, it, it raises the interest. It keeps those uh, enthusiasts in the market excited about what we're doing. They're spending their money with us. And if you're hanging on a hook in a store or you're selling your goods on Amazon or on your own website or somebody else's website, it's, it's critical that we keep their attention. Yeah. So yeah. if we work together as a community and we do that, it's everybody's going to prosper at the end of the day. Yeah. So Absolutely. Keep bringing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We will do that. All right. All right, gentlemen. Thank you so much for being on. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to do this again. Absolutely. It'd yep. be a hoot. Thanks a lot. In the not too distant future. Yep. All right. Thank you, guys.